Okay, just as a kind of special treat, what I thought we could do in this next lesson of, of the Denard Duration Bond stuff is we could do some Black Shoals, Monte Carlo stuff. Well, that might be might be a bit of fun. Okay, what we're going to do then? We're going to um, change all this up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to code with lots of errors and then hope it will fix it itself in the end because I'm not going to write the new modules until I've done finished the main. So I'm going to write a new module later called the Black Shoals Merton module. So I'm going to need a header file for that. Um, we're just going to go straight from the command line. So we're going to come in and we're just going to just go straight off. Build a new, there's a new class, build a new object called BSM. From the command line, take in um, well, argv, what we'd like to do is we'd like to take the first asset uh, and, and turn that into a an asset price. So that's going to be the first element of this array. Then I'd like to take um, second string from the command line. And that's going to be turned into a float, and that's going to be the strike price of an option. And actually, I think what we need to do here, let's just do it now. We'll have a, an enumerator. And what we need to be able to price an option using a Monte Carlo engine, using the Black Shoals Merton algorithm, we need an asset price, a current asset price that we can begin our random drift from. We need the strike price of the option. We need the risk-free or growth rate of the market, the drift. Um, we need the volatility of the stock price, uh, however you've worked that out, either historically or via the implicit checking of other people's prices. We need how many years um, the option has before maturity or expiration. It's typically going to be, <coughs> you know, three months or whatever. But we'll, you know, we need to put it in. Um, it's going to be a position. That's going to be parameter five. We need how many steps we're going to use to price. Now we typically do it daily as we're doing our random walk. So that might be two, five, six days in a year, working days in a year for the steps. So that's going to be at position six in the parameters. And how many simulations are we going to run now? Typically, you know, it's kind of vanilla ball, a vanilla option would use a million runs, but you know, we'll do 50 to start with, or even one, just to check everything's working. Some FX options, you know, you might use just a few, but a basic vanilla call option, a million runs there. That's going to be our seventh parameter in this Black Shoals Merton um, Monte Carlo engine. And what that means now we've got this enumerator, we can replace this one here with something that means a bit more. We can replace that with a string, it means asset. Remember, the arguments are coming on the command line, come in as strings. And what we need to do is we need to turn them into, and the first thing in the zeroth position is the name of the program. The first thing we need to do is turn this first thing into a float. So the first thing is going to be float. And the second one in position two is going to be the strike price. Again, it comes in as a string 100. Yeah, it comes in as a first thing we get in, we get the program name argv0. We get program name, so whatever this program is called. And then the thing of position zero is going to be the asset price, but it's coming in as a string. So we need to turn it into a float and then send that off to this class to be turned into a Black Shoals Merton object. Then the strike might set that to be 110. And that'll be the third thing of position strike, which is position two. So hopefully that's making a bit of sense. Put my comma back in.
Okay, so we need all these other we need all these other things as well. So let's uh, let's we can do some jiggery pokery here. So I'm just going to copy that to there. That's going to be the growth. That's going to be the drift rate, the kind of growth of the of the money supply. I don't want to think of that as being. That's the volatility of the stock. So a low volatility would be a very dull company. Very high volatility would be a very exciting company. Number of years is at position five. Number of steps we wish to price on. The lower the steps, the quicker it will run. But the lower the steps, the more inaccurate the price will be at the end. And then how many simulations do we want to run again? That'll often be something like a million if we're uh, doing something fairly straightforward. Not something fancy. So let's just finish this off. Oh, don't know what happened there. There we go. And then, oh, brackets, super, and then a bracket on the end. So we're going to create this object, final bracket. This object is going to take seven parameters. So one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven. It's going to be the asset, the current asset price, 100, 103, 69, who knows what it's going to be. The strike price of the option. The price above which, if the asset price goes above that, we, we make a payoff. The growth, the kind of growth in the marketplace, the drift. The volatility of the particular stock. The number of years we have to wait before we measure the price against the strike. And if the price is above the strike, we make a payoff. The number of pricing steps we're going to do. The more steps we do, the more accurate the price, final price will be. But it will go quicker if we do. Sorry, less steps, quicker, but less accurate. More steps, more accurate, but slower. Stimulations. The more simulations we do, the more accurate the, uh, the final price. But the longer it will take. Think, think of the number of times you would put a ball in a Monte Carlo wheel. If you put it in three times, you won't get a very good average. If you put a ball in a Monte Carlo wheel a billion times and spin it, you'll get a very good average of when red 32 comes up. You know, you're not worried about chance or probability or mathematics. You're just worried about the spinning of the wheel, the, the grain of the wood, the slipperiness of the polish, the friction of the red 32 box and the nature of the ball. So the beauty of this method is that it doesn't rely... On pure maths, it kind of just clunks along, um, just like throwing a ball in a Monte Carlo wheel uh, in a casino a billion times. Okay, we're pretty much done there. Um, we need to check a couple of things. We'll have some methods which tell us um, what we've just done. So what we'll do is we'll say, okay. Just, this will be in the final report, and we're going to call this, the object is BSM, it's the key to the object, so it's going to be BSM dot, uh, I think we'll just get get BSM assets, just, to, just as a sanity test and just for the final report, strike price, Again, bsm dot get um, bsm strike. I think just to keep it simple. Well, so oh, growth. So um, growth. Let's be bsm dot get bsm growth. So we've got volatility, so I'll have the volatility BSM dot what should we have there? Uh, get BSM vol years. So that's going to be uh, years before the option expires. 
Just make it a nice simple European, if you don't mind. We don't want to do Americans now, otherwise our heads will blow off. BSM years. For which we'd use a slightly different method. Called find that difference. Um, steps. BSM, get BSM steps. That's the number of pricing runs within the period. And finally, the number of simulations we're going to run. So I'll just say sims. BSM dot get BSM. That's Monte Carlo sims, isn't it? Throwing a ball in a Monte Carlo wheel a million times. Um, I think that that will probably do it. Let's just line that up. And what we'll do as soon as we've set the object up, we'll start the thing running. So what we'll do is we will get the object, it will have all the bits and pieces it needs, and we will say, okay, let's do a log normal random walk. And it's going to be using the Black Shoals algorithm and a few bits and pieces. Probably want to just do a little bit of messaging there just to clean things up. And then we're going, once we've done the random walk, we can then get out the call price. So call option price according to the parameters above. And we'll just have a nice simple get call price. Uh, we'll also do a put price as well. So we can watch James Bond films with confidence. Monsieur de Chiffre, oh, put option price. And we'll have a method um, BSM dot get put price. And that should be that. So include, oh yeah, no, I haven't got it, have I? Um, little enum there just to clean up the input so we know what we're getting. We're getting the current stock price getting the strike price of the option, we're getting the growth rate of the market, we're getting the volatility of the particular stock, we're getting the number of years before the options expire, the number of pricing steps we're going to use, um, and the number of Monte Carlo simulations we're going to run in this Monte Carlo engine. Uh, the more steps we have, the more simulations we have, the more accurate but the slower we go. So here's the new class that we're going to create in the next lesson. Here's the key to that object. First parameter is a string which gets turned into asset, then a strike, then growth, then volatility, then years, then steps, then simulations. And then we get, we, we go back to the object and we just check that we've got that the way we want it. Because remember we will be inputting on the command line. This will be a little report at the end, just as a sanity test, telling us what it thinks it's priced. We're then going to execute a Monte Carlo simulation run. And once we've finished that run, we can then just pump out the call option price and then the put option price. And I think we'll uh, stop that enough typing for the moment. Um, I'll see you next time.